Hey, Tia. Thank you so much for being here today. We're so grateful that we get to interview you. Um, I would love if you could introduce yourself. Hi, Courtney. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm so excited. So my name is Tia. Um, my author name is Tia Christine. I am the writer of Realm of Chaos, which is now the first book in the Chaos series. I'm also the founder of Order of the Bookish, which is a company that you know helps authors and indie authors, new authors, produce and market their books. So I have quite a bit of experience with producing and marketing books, but this is my very first that I'm actually doing for myself. So it was very nerve wracking and also just like really exciting that I finally get to put my own voice out in the world. Love that. As a side note for our listeners, just so you know, we do have an Order of the Bookish podcast episode from back in 2023. So be sure to go ahead and check that out. I would love if you could tell us what your book is about. Yeah. Okay. So the blurb does give a little bit of like Easter eggs and not any spoilers, but it gives the, you know, hint to the spoilers. So I try not to tell anyone the blurb. I want people to like actually go and look at it for themselves, especially because a lot of my Easter eggs within the blurb are also in the cover as well. And I love just like hearing readers tell me, oh my gosh, like I read the book and now I see it. Now I see what's on the cover. And now I, I understand why you made the blurb the way I did. Um, so I encourage everyone to go look at it, but essentially the book is about a princess. Her name is Nim or Nimeria is her full name. And her sister has to marry the evil fake king. And that causes a whole bunch of drama and chaos, literally chaos happens. And Nim ends up having to go to the realm of where the Fae live. Now, the humans and Fae have not been getting along for centuries. But now this opportunity has come up where they might be able to come together. So Nim now has to navigate, you know, this life with her sister who's going to have to marry the Fae King. And then she's actually in the realm of chaos. Chaos is the name of the area where the Fae live. And she has to navigate that whole situation. And really, it's a it's a story meant for young female readers. It's a young adult story. And I have it very like action centered. Um, it's very plot focused because I do want to, there's a little bit of romance, especially in the upcoming books, but it is more about Nim and her growth and how she navigates life. Um, so this is something that I'm hoping a lot of young readers will be able to connect with. She is a little bit sassy, a little bit snarky, um, a little bit pessimistic. And it's just something that I wish I had read when I was, you know, a teenager growing up, because I think younger me could relate a lot to this character. Love that. What inspired you to write your book? Um, well, so it's a, it's a story plot line that is not entirely, I love fantasy. Like I love Faye, I love enemies to lovers. And so that's all in the book. So it's really within the realm of what I just love enjoying. Like I love to read. So it's not like a huge difference than what everyone has right now. Like the fantasy books that we have right now, like Sarah J Moss, for example. But the difference is that, um, it is the main character is more focused on, the personality of, you know, optimistic. She loves her sister, like die hard. She's sassy and snarky. And I really just wanted to create this book where the relatable character that would have relatable characters in it. So I wanted this story to have all the fantastical elements, have the kingdom, have the epicness, have the enemies to lovers, a little bit of romance, but something that you know, I could look at myself in this character or in one of the other characters and just say, oh, I'm a lot like this. And I would love to take a little bit of her personality trait and give it to myself in real life. Like one of the things that Nim does is that she looks at someone and she will call them out if she thinks that they're lying to her, if she doesn't think they're doing the right thing, like she calls it out immediately. So that's just one example of something that is in her past personality that you know, I wish I had, and I'm hoping that a lot of younger readers will look at and say, oh, I wish I was like this too. Love that. When you were writing your book, who are you thinking of when it comes to who your book was for? Um, So I was mostly just thinking of like younger teenage me, um, which is not, I'm not like, I'm not old or anything. So it wasn't that long ago. It was about a decade ago that like teenage me was getting into reading and getting into this epic fantasy. But I was really just writing for myself and what I would have been interested in back in the day. 
which is something I'm hoping people are still interested in. And I think they are. I've had a lot of good, uh, really strong feedback on this. But I'm also thinking about parents as well, because we have so many, you know, young adult books coming out now that do kind of skate that line of, especially when it comes to like the smuttiness, where it's like not really like teenage young adult, it's like adult adult content. So I wanted parents to know this book is young adults. It's, you know, not going to cross that border. It's not going to toe that line to like the unnecessary smuttiness. But I do, and I am going to have a spinoff series that is going to be for adult content. So I am going to have a little bit of both worlds in there. And the idea of the whole series is that this Realm of Chaos series, which is planned to be three, is for the younger demographic. Um, so like middle school, high school age. And then once I start releasing the smuttier books, that's assuming that, you know, the readers who read Realm of Chaos will be reading that in a few years as they're actually adults. So you kind of just like grow along with the book's publications. Love that. How long have you been writing and what made you really sit down and start? Mm, okay, so my first attempt at writing, like real writing, not because someone told me to do it in school, was I, I was probably like 12 or 13. It was, you know, just when Twilight came out. So I was really getting into reading. I hated reading before Twilight. And then Twilight made me fall in love with books. And then I found this author. Her name is Amelia Atwater Rhodes. And she has a bunch of books out. And to this day, it's still one of my favorite um, series and uh, like multiple books that she has I love. But she was, I believe she was 15 or 16 when she published all those. So super, super young and very successful at a young age. And I was a little bit competitive back then. So I looked at her and I looked at her age and I thought of my age, about 13 years old. And I was like, I can beat this. I can read a book and be successful and be a writer before I become the age that she was at the time. So I started writing. And the embarrassing part was that I started writing my book on Microsoft PowerPoint, not on Word not using any actual program in PowerPoint on slides. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what my thought process was behind putting words on a PowerPoint presentation, thinking it would become a book. Um, so fast forward a little bit, I gave up and just decided I'm just gonna be a reader. I love reading. And then I had actually started a book blog in high school. And it was just like my little, my little space where every book I read and I was reading like five a week, like I was tearing through books. Um, so it was just a place where I could go write a couple paragraphs, keep my thoughts organized and just build up my, my, my list of books that I've read. And then in college, I knew I wanted to do publishing, not be a writer, but produce books. So I tried to do that. I couldn't get into the publishing industry with any of the publishers that I wanted. So a couple years later, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start my own company. I'm just going to do it myself. So then I started Order of the Bookish, started producing my own books. Um, I started producing books for other authors um, with my own company. And it wasn't until earlier this year that I sat down and I was like, I'm going to publish my own. I've been writing for probably a couple of years now, not with the intention of publishing it, just because they were stories in my head that I wanted to write down and just exist somewhere besides my own mind but I never actually intended to publish any, any of them. And most of them are not even finished. This is the first thing I've ever actually finished, like to the end. So wanting to be a published author and writer for myself is a pretty new thing, with the exception of my stint on PowerPoint when I was like 13. Love that. What is your schedule like when you are writing a book? Um, that's hard to answer because I have ordered the bookish, which takes up 110% of my time. Literally from the second I wake up, I'm checking my socials, checking the socials for the authors that I help market for. And then to when I go to sleep, I'm still answering emails and stuff like that. So usually like when I have meal times, with the exception of dinner, like breakfast, lunch, snack times, if I ever need just like a step away from the computer, um, I'll either continue writing on my computer or if I step away from like devices because my mind is just like overwhelmed with devices, then I'll like grab a pad. I have a notepad that I keep it, that I write ideas down on. So I'll just write down ideas. I'll write down like words, synonyms for things that I have thought about, but didn't, didn't have time before to actually get into. And I would like even draw character art on my notepad and just kind of like, even if I wasn't actually writing like writing out words, sentences, paragraphs, I was at least getting myself into the mindset of let me work on my story a little bit. So I probably 
maybe only work on my book for like an hour a day total, uh, which is not a lot. I absolutely wish I could do more. I'm trying to get better at separating out my weekends where my weekends, I don't do order of the bookish stuff. And I only do, you know, house chores, playing with my puppy, and then actually writing. And I'm getting a little bit better at that. But yeah, the time management to put into my actual book has been hard. What do you need in your writing space to help you stay focused? Um, that's a good question. I do not have an answer because I'm very easily distracted. Um, my mind just runs at like a thousand miles an hour. I just constantly have thoughts of things that I need to do, things I could have done better, things I want to do in the future. So I have a lot of like sticky notes all over the place of just ideas of things that I want to do 10 years from now, which is absolutely ridiculous because it's not going to help me right now. I, I really do struggle of like sitting in one spot and just getting it done when it comes to my writing because there are so many other things that I'd get distracted by. And it's all in my head. It's not anything physical besides maybe my puppy. But I, in order to stay focused, I need my work area to be completely clear. Like right now I have um, book sleeves next to me because I did start selling book sleeves on my TikTok shop. I have some snacks next to me. I have a couple books. Um, I have more snacks over here, a notepad of all the things I have to do today. So like if I look in either direction right now, I will be distracted from the writing that I'm trying to do. So if I'm going to try to stay focused, all of this needs to be cleared away so I don't get distracted. <laughs> Love it. What is your favorite writing snack and drink? Um, at the moment, I have sunflower seeds, cookie dough, and I love Coca-Cola. It's like my weakness, but it's so bad to the point where if I'm drinking like two or three cans or bottles a day, then I have to quit. So a few days ago, I found I caught myself drinking. I had like three bottles on my desk. So I was like, Tia, you need to cut it out, take a break. So right now I have lemonade, but I would prefer Coca-Cola, sunflower seeds, or something salty with cookie dough. So like something salty, something sweet, and like a sugary drink. Love it. What type of books do you personally enjoy reading? The kind that I write. Uh, so epic fantasy, especially if there's like multiple books in the series. Uh, stuff like Sarah J. Moss. I love that she has like five books plus for each of her series. I love like the Twilight series. They're really epic four. And they're like thick four books. Um, just about anything that I could really spends my time getting into um and especially like fantasy epic enemies to lovers that's always my like weakness but besides like the enemies to lovers epic fantasy I'm really just happy with anything that would keep my attention for a long period of time so any kind of series especially like paranormal or even fiction that will have like two three four books in it it's kind of hard for me to get into a book if it's just a standalone. I don't really like the easy reads. I want to like get invested. Love that. Are there any books or authors that inspired you to become a writer? Um, yeah, so I think I mentioned her earlier. Uh, Amelia Atwater Rhodes was probably my very first one uh, just because I was competitive and she was so young when she published her books and I was like, I'm going to beat it. I didn't, obviously, but I probably would just, I would, even today, even though she's not the reason I published these current books, I would still give her credit for me wanting to be a writer because that was what initially sparked my interest in writing. And even if I didn't touch it for 10 years or didn't even attempt writing for another 10 years, that was always in the back of my mind. And it's because of her. But then also Stephanie Meyer, the Twilight series, is the reason why I got into reading. So I guess just like being in the bookish world, I would give my credits to Stephanie Meyer and Amelia Atwater Rhodes. Love that. What books did you grow up reading? Did you have an all-time favorite? Um, that's such a hard thing to answer. I don't know of any like real like book worm, book dragon, because you know, I just hoard books. Um, and I've read hundreds in my life. Um yeah, there were a lot of years when I was reading like two to five books per week, which I don't even know what that would add up to right now, like hundreds of books. So it's really hard to just pick one favorite. And it kind of depends on my mood. I, I definitely have some that are like at the top. So, you know, Twilight series, Amelia Atwater Rhodes, the author, are always up there. Um, 
I love Sarah J. Moss right now. I think she's killing it. I definitely look a lot at her marketing, her writing style, and she does third person point of view. And I tend to go to first person, but I like the way she describes her world and does her world building. So I do take a lot of inspiration from her as well. Um, I'm like trying to look at my bookshelf right now. I love the Percy Jackson series. Um, James Patterson absolutely kills it with everything he does. He does mostly adult stuff, but he has a few young adult books that I really, really enjoy. So I try to go through those a couple of times a year. I don't know. There's so many. I could go on for like hours about all the books that I have. And I'm probably going to look at a book right now on my shelf and just be like, oh, I love that one too. Even though I haven't read it in five years. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a hard answer. <laughs> that's a hard question to answer. Love it. On the other side of that, now as an adult, what are your favorite series or authors that if they come out with something, you automatically grab it? Oh, my autobi authors. Um, So one of them is actually well, two of them. Okay, so two are independent authors that I found on Bookstagram. Um, one is Morgan Gauthier, who is the author of Wolves of Adelore. And she has a few books out now. So the main attractions one, she's coming out with, uh, I forgot the name, something about stars and starlight. I don't know, something like that. So anytime she comes up with something new, she is my autobi author. I don't need to see the cover. I don't need to know the name. I don't need to know the blurb. I know her writing style and I know everything she creates is like impeccable. So I will automatically buy whatever she, if she says Tia, buy it, I will buy it. (laughs) Um, And then Lisette Marshall is another one that I found on Bookstagram. I absolutely am obsessed with like everything that she's created. She has, I think, four books in her series right now. And it's, you know, enemies to lovers, fey, fantasy, epic world building. And I got a lot of motivation from her. So I saw her publishing her books and I had already had this idea for Realm of Chaos in my mind. So seeing her produce her books and getting to to read them and see how successful she was as an indie author uh, kind of pushed me into becoming an indie author, knowing that, you know, I could potentially see my books out there just as much as I see hers out there. So those are my two autobies right now. And they're both indie authors. Love that. What would you tell someone just starting out with reading again? Oh, with oh, reading. reading. Um, so don't pick up a book that you see because everybody else is talking about it. So one mistake I've met, I've read I've made is that when I have periods of of like I don't want to read right now, I'm just not in the mood, I'll pick up a book that I see that's popular on like book talk, like maybe a Colleen Hoover book, and I would read the first page and I then I would stop reading again because It's not my thing. And everyone says it's great, but what everybody loves isn't what I love. So don't do what everybody else is doing just because you see it's popular. If you're going to start reading again and you might have like stopped reading for a while, pick up a book either that you read before that you know you love and haven't read in a while or pick up something similar that you know will get you interested in reading again. You got to start off slow and something that you know you'll like. Don't start off like running headfirst with something that everybody else likes because that's not going to be what you like. Um, So just like stick with what you enjoy. Love it. On the other side of that, what would you tell someone just starting to write their own book? Oh gosh, Uh, set a schedule because that's the one thing I have not done. And I think that's what kept me from publishing for so long Um, and publishing correctly. I did kind of like go through periods of writing a lot and then not really writing at all. And then I had a deadline set for myself on Amazon. So then I had to like write really quickly and I made a couple mistakes in my writing. So I had to republish it with the, you know, corrected mistakes. And that was really a struggle. So if you're getting into writing, um, even if you don't intend on publishing it, or if you do intend on publishing it, just give yourself like a realistic schedule. And that's like keyword realistic. Don't say I'm going to write for three hours a day. Well, you have a full-time job and you're in school full-time and you have a kid and you have to like eat and sleep. Um, That's not realistic. So if you want to do like 20 minutes a day or only write on Saturdays, um, setting up a realistic schedule, I think really helps you stay in the mindset of, oh, I'm going to take this seriously. And I think that's also training your brain to be creative during those moments of the day or the week. So I know when I'm sitting down to write that's when my mind really fires up and I'm able to easily switch gears into my creative writing process. Whereas most of the day I'm in my, you know, business marketing mindset. Um, So you do kind of have to train your brain of getting into, this is my time to write. This is my time to be creative. Love that. What's one thing that people are generally surprised to find out about you? Um, 
Oh, I don't know. I don't think anyone I've already I've even asked anyone that question or it's ever come up. I would assume maybe that I have order of the bookish. Um, you know, the way I you you guys can't see me, but the way I look right now is pretty much how I look all the time. I have on like a hat and a tank top and I'm in sweatpants all day. Um, so the fact that I have this, you know, successful company that I absolutely love so much and I work so hard on and I've had you know, a decade of marketing experience and have been doing this for a long time. I think looking at me, you wouldn't assume that I do that. You'd probably assume that I'm like, I don't know, a bum because I look like a bum. Honestly, (laughs) I look horrible (laughs) and like a mess. So the fact that I have my life together, have the company, have this new book out, have a full series planned um, against, you know, how I look on the outside, they don't go together. Um, so I think that kind of surprises some people. I know a lot of my friends that I've met in real life are always like surprised when I tell them about what I do. And then just as far as like within writing, I think a lot of people are surprised by what I have planned for the chaos series. So it is plans to be 13 books, um, possibly 15. I'm playing around with ideas for a couple others, but it is going to be really epic. There's going to be a lot of spinoffs and it's going to age. So it's going to go from young adults to incredibly smutty and spicy throughout those spinoffs as we get older and older. So I think that has surprised a lot of people on how big the project is as well. Love that. Is there anything you would like to say or add? Oh gosh. I mean, like probably, yeah, like hours worth (laughs) of advice and tips and like rants that I can go on (laughs) about books and the book community and writing and marketing and all this stuff. Yes, I could go on forever. But I would say, you know, just to reiterate a couple of my earlier points, you know, if you're just getting into reading or writing, stick with what you know and love and then experiment after that, um, because it is easier to like start slow and slide in that way. Um, Also setting yourself a schedule because doing it without a schedule makes things 10 times harder and also do your research. So I would consider even reading books to be research. As long as you're reading books, not necessarily for the enjoyment of it, but looking at a book and thinking about how this character develops, thinking about, you know, why the why the artist made the cover this way. You have to think about the book as a whole, not just the story and the plot line. Um, because there is a lot and a lot and a lot of work that goes into publishing a book. From what you see between the pages to the cover to the back matter to then the marketing behind it. So if you want to get into this industry or you're just starting out, do your research because I think a lot of independent authors go into this not realizing how much goes into it, into it. And it ends up being very daunting and a lot of people quit. And I hate seeing really great writers quit before they publish or um, they don't really put time into like marketing the book. We want to read your books. So, you know, do your marketing and then do your research on how to do it in the best way that fits your lifestyle. So that's probably my my biggest piece of advice is just do your research. Love it. Where's the best place for readers to find your book? I know some readers love signed copies. Is that an option and the best place to connect with you? Mm, okay. So I have my book wide right now. So I did publish through Ingram Spark and I'm currently working on getting it into schools and libraries. Um, I do have side copies available. Um, I don't have an author website. I do everything through orderofthebookish.com and you'll see my author page pop up there. So that's probably the easiest way to find more about where you can buy my books. I'll have all the links there. Um, it's signed copies, book boxes, all the fun stuff will be available on the Order of the Bookish website. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We're so grateful we got to interview you. We'll be sure to drop those links in the show notes. And again, thank you so much. Thank you. It was so great being here. Happy reading, everybody. Thank you.